A word that comes to mind when I think about Jesus is powerful. Kind. I think about the word peace. Loving and caring. Life because he sacrificed his life to give us ours. Is Jesus God or is God Jesus or are they the same person? What's it like being the most powerful person that ever walk on earth? What did he do on his downtime? Why does he love us so much? He's a person who loves and cares for me. My role model. A very safe person to talk to. Jesus is a friend. If I'm dealing with anything, I know I can go to him and he'll help me through it. Hey, junior highs, what is up? This guy, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I promise I won't do that again. I know. Leader Aaron and Leader Miss Love just put that in my head. So every time I say what is up, I have to say this guy. But I promise this will be the last week. I won't do it again. Promise, promise. Anyways, how y'all doing? I want to hear from you. Throw in the chat. What are you up to? How was your week? And um, I've got a question for you for us to just start off this new series in the best way. If you could ask Jesus, any question, if you could ask him any single question, what would that question be? Put it in the chat, I want to hear from you. We guys, we're live in the chat, so I wanna hear what your question would be. My question, I mean, besides like, why do people have to hurt? And why are there awful diseases like cancer? All, like I would have those questions, but I'd also wanna know like, why can't we fly, you know? Like, why can't we humans just like, pick up and fly? Or why can't we breathe underwater for like extenu like extended periods of time? Those are two things that I really wanna be able to do. And so I'd wanna know why we can't do those. Those are the, I think that would be my question. What would your question be? Throw it in the chat, I wanna know. It could be something crazy like mine, like why can't we fly? Or it could be something a little bit serious. I wanna hear from you. But we are jumping into this brand new series and it's called, Who is Jesus? Now, if you've been attending online or even physical with us at One Church TO Youth, uh, we talk about Jesus a lot, almost every week. Actually, every week. We talk about Jesus and we talk about who he is, but this, time, this series, we're going to really dig deep into realizing who Jesus is. And this series is going to bring us into the Easter season. The Easter story and teaching the Easter story can be hard for leaders and it can be really hard for, for you guys. I mean, if you think about it, it's a pretty crazy story. You hear about Jesus and his and the horrible experience that he had leading up to the cross, and then you hear about him dying on the cross, and then he's raised again? I mean, logically, our logical minds are like, wait, what? It's hard for us to focus on that. And especially if you guys have been attending church for, like your whole life, you've heard this Easter story every single year. It's not a surprise to you, you know the story. And so it's hard sometimes for us to lean in and to really, really hear the message of Easter. And so this series, I'm gonna go through the whole series with you. This series, I'm really encouraging you to lean in. Around this time of year, my prayer is always this, God, show me something that I've never learned before. holidays and it's not just because the candy is amazing I mean I'm gonna save this for later 
I love Easter because it gives us a chance to remember all that Jesus has done for us. It gives us a chance to get to know him in a new way. And that's a really big deal because knowing Jesus changes everything for us. I asked what questions my students had about Jesus. And this is what they said. Is Jesus even real? Am I supposed to talk to Jesus? Hmm. Is Jesus really God too? How do I know I'm close to Jesus if I can't see him? It's a really good question. Was Jesus a man who actually lived on earth? What does it mean to have a relationship with Jesus? And what did Jesus really do for me? I mean, these are all such really good questions. And I've asked quite a few of these questions myself. If you've asked any of these questions before, I want you to know it's okay to ask. In fact, Jesus wants you to ask because asking is what helps you know him more. And that's really the goal of this whole faith thing. So before we jump into discovering more about who Jesus is today, let me tell you a quick story. There was one time I decided to go on this kind of academic camp thing, and it was all these different kids from different schools that gathered together at this university, and I was the only student from my school that got accepted to go. And this was in a totally different place. I had to drive, we had to like drive three hours to get there, and the first thing we did was eat dinner and I didn't know anybody. And so I sat in this big cafeteria all by myself eating alone and it was terrifying. Have you ever been there? The truth is we all know what it's like to feel alone. Even if you're in a room full of people when no one really knows you, it can feel like a really lonely place. You probably know what I mean. Even if you have a million friends, a group to hang out with, a constant conversation with friends on apps, 20 group texts going at the same time, a team to support you on, a, on and off the field, a group of friends to sit with at lunch, you still might deal with a feeling of loneliness. Maybe you even have a little voice in your head that tells you, you don't really fit in and no one really knows you. You'll never really feel connected to someone else. Have you ever been there before? Take a second to think about it. The reason I know you might think this, well, besides the fact that I've thought it at a time or two myself, there's actual research that proves it. Let's say these guys represent actual people. In a study of middle and high school students, 40% of people said they felt lonely or disconnected from others most of the time. That's for out of 10 people that probably feel alone or left out on a regular basis. Four of the 10 of your friends, four out of 10 of the people here at church or in your class, even when you're surrounded by others, 40% of teens still feel disconnected. In fact, for most of us, it can feel like there's something that keeps us from being with other people. I mean, sure, we can see or hear what's going on over there, but there's something that's keeping us from being able to join in. There's something that's keeping us from connecting. There's something between us and them, and that makes us feel like we're left all alone out here. So what if I told you that you're not alone? For starters, you're definitely not the only one who feels this way. Everyone struggles with this feeling of being disconnected or alone at times. But beyond that, you're not alone because of Jesus. Now listen, I know you might be thinking, not alone because of Jesus? I mean, what does that even mean? Well, I say it because I think it's true. And maybe you do too. Maybe the idea of Jesus being with you makes things feel better for you. Or maybe the idea of Jesus being with you is just confusing. Maybe the idea of Jesus, God's son sent to earth to save us, doesn't change all that much for you. The idea of a God who seems far away, old and distant is not exactly helpful. It doesn't feel helpful when your friends leave you out or you feel like an outsider in your own family or when you just feel disconnected. In those moments, what does Jesus mean for you really? If that's how you feel, I get it, but stick with me. Because I think that by asking questions about who Jesus is, we'll discover just how much knowing Jesus really does change everything, including when we feel disconnected. 
Conversations about who Jesus really is come up a lot around this time of year. Easter celebrates the moment in history when Jesus died and then came back to life. And while it's this really amazing, incredible thing that happened, it's also something that has made people ask a lot of questions along the way. Questions about who Jesus is and what his death on the cross means for us. And since it's okay to ask questions when it comes to our faith, I wanna dive into some of that stuff with you today. To kick things off, we're gonna jump right to that moment at the end of Jesus' life. But first, let me give you some background. Jesus lived in ancient Israel and grew up in first century Jewish culture. A huge part of life for people then was the temple. The temple was where people went to worship God. It was also the place where all the important stuff in town happened. And certain parts of the temple were only for certain people. For example, if you weren't Jewish, you had to stay on the outside. Women, even if they were Jewish, could only go so far. Jewish men could go inside, but only to certain places. Priests could go farther. You see, the whole thing was built so that people kept their distance from the center of the temple, a place called the Holy of Holies. That's where God was. Because God was so holy, people couldn't get close. So that part was sectioned off by a curtain. In fact, even the most important priests were only allowed to go behind the curtain one time per year. The point of this whole history lesson is this. The culture Jesus lived in had a lot of separation. The people literally couldn't get behind the curtain. They were disconnected. People were separated from each other. And most importantly, everybody was separated from the place where God was. And without Jesus, everybody would have stayed separated from God. Back then, people asked a lot of questions about Jesus too. Why did Jesus come to earth? What was he trying to do? Was he really the son of God? Some people thought he was just a really good teacher. Other people thought he was a political leader who would overthrow Roman rule. Nobody expected that same Roman government would actually arrest Jesus and sentence him to death, but they did. When it was happening, it was awful. Jesus was tortured and beaten and insulted by those who were torturing him. But as this was happening, God was using this moment to do so much more. Check this out. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn into from top to bottom. I mean, this is a huge deal. Remember that curtain, the one that separated God from everyone else? At the moment Jesus died, the curtain was ripped apart. The days of separation were over forever. Before, only once a year could the most important priest ever really get close to God. But in a moment, Jesus changed everything. Jesus made it perfectly clear that there would never be separation between God and God's people again. It changed everything for the people back then, and it can change everything for us today too. Your friends may feel distant, but God isn't. You may feel like other people don't know you or want to be close to you, but God does. You may feel like you have to be good to be around God, but you don't. Nothing you do or don't do can separate you from God who loves you. One of Jesus' friends, a guy named John, wrote down everything about his experience with Jesus while he was on earth. John saw it all, including the way Jesus' death and resurrection changed everything. I think one of the things John tells us that Jesus said can help us understand who Jesus is to us. Take a look. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. We are friends with Jesus. That's so amazing to me. Jesus, as my friend, I love that thought. But as cool as that is, I think there's more to it than that. It's not just, we're friends so we can hang out and go camping and stuff. It's, we're friends because I'll turn the world upside down, defeat death, and even tear the curtain in two to prove that we are connected. You and I and all the people after you are connected. From now on, you're always gonna be connected to God. My death on the cross made sure that was possible no matter what. We can never be separated and you are not alone. In other words, because of Jesus, you can be connected to God. This is what Easter means for us. And this is who Jesus really is. He is the connection point from us 
to God. So even when you feel disconnected from your friends or people at school or even people at home, you never have to be disconnected from God. There is no curtain between you. God's close to you no matter what. Maybe you've never thought about Jesus like a close friend. Maybe you've believed the stories of who Jesus is from your grandma or someone at church or the Christians on TikTok. I wanna challenge you to find out for yourself. I want you to feel like you can ask the question, who is Jesus? Because it's okay to ask. That's exactly one of the reasons we have groups. So we can remind each other of what's true about who Jesus really is. That even when we feel far away, there's no separation. Because of Jesus, you can be connected to God. For some of you, this might be the first time you've realized that you can be close to God. If that's you, a huge step you can take today is to talk to a trusted adult, a parent, or your group leader about that. Talk to them about what it means to connect with God, to follow God, and to grow in your relationship with God. These are people who wanna help you understand how knowing Jesus can change everything for you. Then. I want you all to try this. The next time you feel yourself feeling lonely or disconnected or separated, go to God. Tell God how you feel. Spend time with God. Reach out to a friend who you know will encourage you to remember what's true about God. You could listen to worship music or pray or write down your thoughts in your journal to God. Whatever this looks like for you, take a step to connect with God when you feel disconnected because no matter what, you can. Remember, because of Jesus, you can be connected to God. I want you to think about this. What if you're not as alone or disconnected as you think you are? What if nobody is? What if that thing in you that says, I feel alone and it shouldn't be this way, is a reminder that God didn't create you to be disconnected. God made a way to be close to you. Because of Jesus, you can be connected to God. That means you never have to be alone. So I got a thought for you. What if you were not as alone as you sometimes feel? What if you've never been as disconnected as you think you are? God made a way for us to be close to Jesus by having Jesus die for our sins. And it's a big concept for us to understand, but Jesus has never left us. He never leaves us alone. And even though sometimes we feel disconnected, we feel like our school life or our home life isn't connected to our church life. It's important to recognize that God has made a bridge for that, and that's Jesus. And Jesus loves us so much that despite how we feel, despite how disconnected or separate you might feel, that's not the case for Jesus. Just because you've maybe walked away or you've fallen away from him or you don't connect with him at, at school or at home, it doesn't mean that he's not there. And it doesn't mean that as soon as you turn to him, you call his name, he won't answer. He's always there with us. So that's something that we've got to remember, despite how challenging sometimes it feels, how, how alone and how separate and disconnected we can sometimes feel. We never are because of the gift of who Jesus is. I got a couple of questions for you. The first one is this. What's one reason why someone might feel lonely or disconnected from others?
The next question is this, have you ever felt separate from God? And if so, when? And the last question is this, what's one way that someone can connect with God? Well, I hope that you are interacting with those questions and you're really thinking about them because this week I want us to lean in. Like I said at the beginning, this season is, is kind of tricky. And if you're used to listening to the Easter story, you've heard it a thousand times, but I want this prayer to be your prayer. What is something new that I can learn throughout this Easter season? Y'all let's pray. Oh, you're not kids. I was gonna go five, four. <laughs> you guys aren't kids. Okay, let's pray. I don't know, I feel like I've gotta do something. Like, let's pray. <laughs> something like that, I don't know. All right, here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you that you are a God who loves us so much that you gave us your son. And Lord, I know for some of us who are church kids and we've attended church since before we can even remember, this story is so common. We've heard it so many times before. We hear it at home, we hear it at church. If we go to Christian school or Catholic school, we hear it at school. But God, I pray that this is more than just a story to us. It's more than just someone telling us something, but it goes deeper than that. It goes deep into a relationship. Father, we are never as alone or disconnected or separate as we may feel. And God, some of these junior highs might be feeling that today. And Lord, I just pray that you come around them, Father. I pray that you lift them up, Lord, and that they don't feel like this forever. And they know that as soon as they call out your name, that you are there. So God, take care of us all. I, I pray a blessing over all of us. And we pray all these things in your wonderful name. Amen. I will see you next week. See you later.